Hi, everybody. Welcome to Radio Dead Air Tech q and I am Nash. Grady, shut the fuck up. Oh, no, he's going to poop. At least he'll be quiet for that. I am Nash. This is uh, my producer, Mike German. Both have long and storied histories with technology. Yes, I realize I'm arguing with a cat. Thank you. <laughs> Tonight's first item, troubleshooting your cat. Sometimes I'm actually tempted to do the actual type shooting. He's taking a shit right now. So, how are you doing, Mike? Not too bad. Someone is, I think someone said in, in the channel, wasn't the light in Mike's room on the other side? I think my camera reversed itself. So, yeah, who cares? <laughs> we don't give a fuck. We don't, we don't give anything resembling a fuck. I updated Skype, so. Well, yeah, that. Ah, uh, Microsoft Skype. You know, Microsoft has not had a very good week, Mike. No, they haven't. Um, so Microsoft decided to do, well, first let me get the, some other stuff out of the way. Um, we're going to be answering tech questions in the second half of the show. First half of the show, we're going to be looking at some news. If you have uh, questions that you think we may be able to assist you with, send those to requests at Radio Dead Air. And you know what? Microsoft may want to consult us on this one because they had a, a little, little bit of a of a thing, Microsoft decided they were going to be hip and with it for the kids. They were going to be down with the kids. Yeah. Um, so they designed a, uh, a Twitter bot. Um, that would mimic a teenage girl. Yeah, and here's how it was described. Listen to this. this. This is from Microsoft's own marketing. Microsoft's AI fam the internet that's got zero chill. I know, Grady, it's awful, isn't it? He's like, that's bullshit. What is that? I know, it's it's bullshit, isn't it? Yeah. He says it's bullshit. Um, it was essentially an AI tweet bot yes. uh, on Twitter that you could interact with. It would learn from the interaction and converse with you. A little bit like Cortana, which I've actually played with Cortana on my laptop on uh, Windows 10 a little bit. I put Windows 10 on my laptop because fuck it, it's my laptop. And it's interesting. It's, it is, uh, there's also some tweaks you can make to it to make it go to Google instead of Bing, which is very nice. Um, because Bing sucks. Because Bing is, is penis. Um, so it, it, they do have some experience with the adaptive learning interactive you know, AI bots. Except Tay, they called it Tay. I, I, don't, I don't ever recall hearing why it was called Tay, but okay. I don't know. Tay, okay. however, learned exactly the wrong shit. Because, of course, it is the internet. Tay... The Twitter trolls got a hold of it. Tay learned to be a racist. Racist? Sexist? Uh, Hitler youth. Yes. Um, let's let's. Who was in favor of Donald Trump? Now, because it was a dad. I already said Hitler Youth. So yeah. Oh, 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 low blow. Uh, let, let's just see some of the things, some of the tweets Tay learned. Tay was asked, "Are you a racist?" Tay replies, "Because you're Mexican." <laughs> um. Tay was asked, "Do you believe the Holocaust happened?" Not really. Sorry. Um, Tay also learned the N-word. Um, also learned, uh, some other things I'm not going to repeat because, well, I'm just going to let it stand for itself. Yeah, I know, Grady, it is awful. It's shameful. Shut the fuck up. Why are you so chatty tonight? Um. Because you sprayed the bitter stuff everywhere. Shut the fuck up. This is going to be the whole night. I have a silly question for you, Nash. Hmm. Did you remember to feed Grady today? Yes, he's got a bowl full of fucking food sitting right the fuck there. I do not want you to sing me the song of your people. Shush. Uh, Tay said, we're going to build a wall and Mexico's going to pay for it. 
Tay went on to say, inbred parasites like Ben Shapiro have to go back to Israel. Wow. And of course, there's the obligatory Gamergate baiting there. Yes. And um, did the Holocaust happen? It was made up. So Microsoft, of course, scrambled to take Tay offline. Not immediately, of course, because they didn't notice it was happening immediately. No, they didn't. But they should have known. It, it felt to me like they started it up and they said, okay, it's going fine for a few hours. It's oh, it's five o'clock. It's time for everyone to go home. We'll check back with Tay in the morning. And they come in and it's, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, let's fire it. Let's take a look at what Tay's been saying. Oh, they no. Coffee and they go, and they spit coffee everywhere. And they still can't take, because the coffee is shorted out their computer. They can't take Tay down right away. Hang on. I have to get, I'm, I'm going to try and get him to shut up just by holding on to him for a little while. Will you shut up? So, yeah. Um, it's do not. It's entertaining, to say the least. How did they not know this was going to happen? Oh, what the fuck? Now you're still complaining. I do, can't hear him now, though. Well, that, okay, I guess that works. Do not let the internet interact with anything if you're especially if you're trying to do a social media thing that's a promotion do not allow it to be interactive with the internet because they will learn too, this too, too many extents or if it is make sure the choices are extremely limited yeah because they, they the internet will learn this and all of a sudden racism or it, it won't necessarily be racism but race, if racism is an option, it'll show up eventually. You know, if this had been the first time anything like this had happened with the Internet, but this is since the beginning of the Internet, if you can draw on it, there will be dicks. Yep. If you can type on it, there will be Hitler was right. Yeah. Every and if you, if you do a hashtag, which is sort of an open ended question, people will ask you the stuff you don't want asked. Yes. There was a, uh, one of my favorites in that vein was a British politician, uh, one of the leaders of UKIP. Uh, and it basically did an ask me anything Twitter hashtag type thing. And one of the hashtag questions was, are you going to deport your teeth because they're brown? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's, it's, it's yeah, never, never. Yeah. How is it companies still... This has been going on for years, and they still do not understand social media is is the most subversive. Maybe they thought they programmed it to not be racist, well, and the internet found a way to make it racist anyway. I would never count on that. I would never go, our programming is too good. We have this fine. Everything good now. I, no. No, do, do not overestimate. Do, do not underestimate the internet. Well, see, because I don't think you can, uh, Cleverbot, I'm not sure if you can make Cleverbot racist. Maybe. I haven't tried. Well, uh, mm. well, I don't think people try that hard with Cleverbot because it's not attached to something like Microsoft, like a big company. You, you, you do that, you're a target automatically because you're a large, well-known, established brand. So, yeah, this don't don't let the internet talk to it become bad. It there. Yeah. yeah, and Tara, Tara will take this some more proof that. Robots are going to destroy us. They, well, no, they're not going to destroy us. They're just going to annoy us. Because this this was... They, I, I don't even understand how this is funny. It's just awful. It's just, look, we can make the robots say the N-word. Okay, that's, that's amusing, sure. I guess. It, it's it's no. Twitter trolls. They they find everything amusing. Yeah, they find every they find the worst parts of humanity are the funny. Making people miserable is hilarious to them. Yeah, that's where Gamergate and uh, ra uh, rabbit puppies and sad puppies came from. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Fuck the internet. Well, next up, um, uh, Nash. There's people who tried. Yeah. Can you fuck it soon someday? Greedy. Freaking stop. What is your problem tonight? What's he doing? It's just... I let you go, you scream. I bring you over here, you scream. I leave you alone, you scream. I don't... 
I can I I'm looking for a USB port on this cat. I need to fucking debug him. Obviously, you need to update his firmware. I do. I do. My cat is out of date. Um, cat 1.0 is out of date. Would you like to upgrade to cat 1.3? So, long, long, well, not long ago, just a while back, there was a, uh, a big problem with Comcast throttling Netflix. This was a, a major point of contention. Comcast was throttling Netflix as a leverage in trying to get them to pay to have their the privilege data, right, being the, Comcast. Right, to pay to actually get their information from Netflix to Comcast users. And this was a big to-do. This is to do net neutrality. Part of probably what contributed to the FCC going, yep, doing net neutrality. Well, Which is still in court cases, as I recall. Yeah. Well, um... Came out today. There was an entirely different, or it came out this week. There was an entirely different kind of throttling going on with Netflix. Uh, this time on mobile, uh, AT and T and Verizon, uh, they have data caps, even on the unlimited ones. If you're on an unlimited plan on AT and T, it's not really unlimited. If you go over a certain amount of gigabytes per month, your bandwidth is throttled down to a trickle to make. Sure, oh yeah, it's unlimited. But you ain't seeing shit. Yeah. That, that's their definition of unlimited. Which has also has court cases pending because yeah. they're saying that's not really unlimited. That's You are lying. Well, Netflix thought it was being helpful for customers on places like AT&T and Verizon where they're charged by, you know, the, the, the gigabyte and they have problems with their caps. Netflix came out, has been throttling data on AT&T and Verizon mobile devices. Was it, was it throttling or was it downsampling? They were well, saying, no, you know, we're not going to go as high as resolution as we could. It was throttling. They, they Let's be honest. It wouldn't. It limited video to, 300, to 600 kilobits per second and 360p. Okay. What? Shut up. Okay, go. If you want to go, you're not gonna. You're gonna just gonna keep complaining at me. But anyway, oh, it's gonna be the entire episode tonight. Grady, shut the fuck up. Anyway, is the door open so we can go to a different room if you wanted to? Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake, cat. Anyway. Well, I'm just going to talk over you. I don't care. You're not going to rain on my parade. So. Uh, yeah, what, now, Netflix's heart was kind of in the right place here. This wasn't an attempt to deprive their customers of content. It was, it was to make sure that they could watch more content. Right. Over the course of a given pay period. Without running completely out of out of cash just by watching Netflix on their He has definitely gotten louder since last week. Could you go to sleep or something, please? Hey, leave that alone. Leave the green screen alone. Fuck you too. <sighs> anyway. <sighs> that it's great. This is gonna be I don't fucking watch the fucking cat. Crazy, stop. Shush. What? What? Go then! <laughs> Go! What? <laughs> you 
You know how at the beginning of the show you were talking about how Siamese were quieter? Yes! I, I grew up with multiple Siamese. Well, no, Siamese up... are not quiet. Siamese are loud. Ragdolls! See, Siamese are, are loud. So you're saying how Siamese are louder? Yeah. Um, I grew up with multiple Siamese that were never as talkative as Grady is today. Will you fuck off? So there we were with Netflix. Uh, Yay! Talk. Yes, Netflix! Yes, throttling. Now, in this case, at least in this case, Netflix's heart was in the right place. They understood that their customers were having to deal with, you know, getting overage charges just from watching Netflix conflict content. And I gotta point out, not to be one of those guys who go, I'm better because I took this option. I'm on Sprint, and they don't do this. So there's no problem on Sprint and such that. Well, Sprint, Sprint doesn't charge for Netflix at all, do they? Well, no. They, 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 Sprint's got. A, I've got a flat, unlimited plan with Sprint, and it's unlimited, unlimited rather right. than unlimited trickle. No, no, it's unlimited, fucking unlimited, which is kind of you know why I did that. Anyway, at least in this case. I can understand why Netflix did it, but they didn't disclose. Yeah, they didn't to tell anyone, customers. which is why everyone's upset. Right. They didn't disclose to their customers, look, we're trying to save you money, so we're automatically throttling. They just kind of did it and didn't even give people the option to shut it off, which has kind of made people upset. And, of course, this has given AT&T and Verizon their cudgel to hit back against Netflix because this is, in fact, nothing to do with the realities of the situation. It's all a PR war for these people. It's nothing to do about, you know, AT&T is, is, they said, quote, we're outraged to learn that Netflix is apparently throttling video for their AT&T customers without their knowledge or consent. It's from AT&T senior executive VP Jim Sassoni. He's not that outraged when they throttle their customers' content, but when Netflix throttles it, oh, it's an outrage. So this is this has got nothing to do with reality. It's entirely become this 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 weapon to use against Netflix in this perception war because they're slimy as fuck. They're fucking slimy bastards. Ugh. Stop that. Get out from behind the green screen. Don't stop it. Oh, Jesus Christ, what is what is your problem tonight? Oh, you're losing. Uh, drive me nuts. Anyway, uh, one final story this week. Uh, we talked a little while back about how um, chips are reaching the limit of what you can do processor wise. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're seeing more multi-core, more hype, you know, type things like hyper-threading. Yeah, and there is another limit that they're coming up on, which is the die shrink. What we mean by that is the size of the trend, the, the uh, etching available, and the way they are able to write the transistors onto the yeah. silicon. How how closely they're able to pack them effectively. Right. Uh, we are at, I think, the effective one right now. Is it 17 nanometers is the one? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. They're trying to move... It's small. They're trying to move from 14 nanometers. And then eventually they're, they're going to try for 10 nanometers. And then 7 nanometers. Although there are some people saying 7 nanometers isn't physically possible in terms... Not in terms of they can't write that small, but in terms of electricity and shit won't work the same way with that tightly packed together at that scale. <sighs> this whole... All right. All right, that's it. You're getting put out. I No, you're getting put out. You're getting put out. Come here. Come, don't run from me. You're getting put out. Oh, say goodbye to everybody, Grady. 
Say goodbye. I'm an annoying little <laughs> kitty. You're annoying. Come on. So while everyone's waiting, who remembers the Come Canadian uh, animation special about the cat that came out. back? Bye bye. Say bye bye to the room. Bye bye room. There so how we go. Long so Nash, how long before there's a furry little paw coming out of the door? Sorry, but no. Oh, headphones. Sorry. Yeah. How long before there's a furry little paw coming under the door? Probably very soon, but we can't hear him out here. Anyway, so... I vamped a little while you were gone. I was talking about in, Intel normally to this, to, to, to date, has what they call the TikTok cycle. Um, what they would do is, on the first part of the cycle, is they would... Uh, well, it depends on from what perspective you're looking at, which is first. One part of the cycle is designing a new chip. Right. The second part of the cycle is reducing the size of the chip to the smaller size of the current process. It went from 28 to 26 to 20 to... They, they yeah. reduced the nanometer size. That was called the TikTok cycle. This week, Intel announced they're retiring the TikTok. Interesting. They are now going from to what's called process architecture optimization. Instead of designing a new chip and then shrinking it down, that that was the TikTok cycle. That was that one generation of chips would be with a new process, and then the next generation would be that same process that was shrink, shrunk to a smaller size. Now they're going to step one will be to design a new chip. Step two will be to shrink it down. Step three. Optimize it is what you said third. Optimization. But what optimization is one of those words in technology. When you ever you hear a company talk about optimization, what that means could be really kind of anything. Yeah. And it's not always good for everything. I've written code and modified code that if you compiled it normally, everything worked. If you compile it optimized, it threw errors mm -hmm. because the timing inside was and what it was communicating with was so tight that the optimized version was trying to process stuff before it was ready. Another another thing about the optimization is you're automatically telling people when you have these th process architecture optimization process is the new is the shrink architecture is the new design optimization is getting the new design and shrink to work. So you're essentially telling people with this labeling, don't, don't buy step two. Don't buy step two. It's going to, or for that matter, don't buy step one, because we're not going to get step one and step two to work right until we get to step three. So that's telling people, ignore two generations of chips, okay? Just don't buy these. Buy the one at the end. That's the one that's going to work. So automatic, auto, starting off at the from the jump, their language is already not instilling consumer confidence on this one. Who did? I'm sure they've, I'm sure they've got some reason for that. People want to buy the verse two. Maybe they'll be cheaper or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's Intel. Yeah, it's Intel. It's Intel. It's never cheaper. Intel. That 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 is the company slogan. Intel. It's never cheaper. So that's already the first problem. The reason Intel is doing this is they are trying to extend the life of a given chip's design beyond the two cycles they were already at. Now they want to stretch it out to three cycles. This is, well, in some ways, this is a part of the whole Moore's Law issue of the drop-off, the, the returns we're getting on, on uh, the chip design. But in another, this is kind of one of those naked cash grab kind of dealies. This is, is stretching out the effective life of sales. And I have to say, yet again, we wouldn't be in this, pre this predicament if AMD was actually a competitive fucking company. If Intel had actual goddamn competition to push them to improve their products, 
and make them worth you know worthwhile we would be seeing but, but now intel has no competition and this is one of those side effects of not having a competition they can do whatever the fuck they want and they kind of are yeah now i i could respect the physical limitations of trying to shrink smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller with with the processes but no, this is Intel, and being able to, the whole stretching it out over three generations of chips instead of two is frustrating to say the least. Because now, with the optimization, again, I'm saying that the whole marketing end of it, the optimization, is you're telling people it won't get good until we're done with it, so don't bother buying these two. Yeah, it's like saying, it's the first version of Microsoft software, I would never fucking buy it. Yeah, you never buy the 1.0. I mean, all those people who bought the iPhone 1.0, the first iPhone. I don't even remember advertisements for the iPhone 1.0. Yeah. And the Apple Watch. Did you say, oh, did you see that Apple was saying there was a correction for um, problem of, of, of battery life with the Apple Watch? You know what they told people? What's that? Buy a second watch so you can use that while the first one's recharging. That was the official line from Apple. No shit. No shit. That's, that's... The balls! The balls! Those are... There's plenty of people who are in Apple things who will do that. So, yeah, this this is not good. I I keep an eye on this in terms of of consumers because this... uh, This does not bode well. Well, we've done all the news... Now it's time to do the questions. We have many and sundry different variety of questions. Uh, Again, if you want to get one into us uh, for next time, send that to uh, your tech, your questions, put the subject line tech Q&A, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. Let's start off with one of those intersections between media and technology. The Blu-ray! Now, you might be thinking, what could this possibly mean? Blu-ray players work just fine. Yes, they do. Unless they're part of a media PC. This is, this is a frustrating thing. Let's get to the question. This comes to us from Rachel. She says, hey, Nash, big fan of both What the Fuck is Wrong With You and Tech Q&A. She doesn't even address Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Hey. It happens. It says, I was wondering, I have a Blu-ray disc drive and several Blu-ray discs. What are the software options for playing Blu-ray discs on PC with Windows 10? Okay, uh, the first one that comes to mind is PowerDVD. But that's a pay option. Well, there's there. I want to say there's a free version that ships with new installs of Windows 10. Um, but it doesn't have all sorts of bells and whistles. Uh, well, no, actually, there isn't one that ships with Windows 10. Not unless you're on a specific uh, uh, manufacturer that comes with it. I was pretty sure I got one, but that might have been a carryover from Windows 7. I don't know. See, oh, wait. No, I know what it was. It came with my Windows. It came with my Blu-ray drive when I bought a right, Blu-ray Right, right. Here's the, the issue that's going on. With Windows 8 and up, Microsoft, and they didn't just drop support for Blu-ray. They dropped it for DVD as well. Blu-ray right, because they didn't want to pay licensing fees. All right, Blu-ray and DVD are proprietary formats. Which, that Microsoft does not own. Right, Microsoft does not own those. Those are owned by a conglomerate, I think, consisting of Philips, Sony. Um, I think LG might be in LG, there. LG, the, the, a, lot, a large uh, consumer electronics conglomerate pooled together. They collectively own the rights to DVD and Blu-ray. These are DRM locked down formats. You can't just pop the disc in anywhere and make it work. Even if you have a Blu-ray player in your Windows 8 or 10 machine, you can't just throw it in and play. Not like with old time. And now not even DVDs as well, because again, that's a locked down format. Microsoft to, for whatever reason, some say it was because I think the official line is, who gives us physical media anymore? Or also to cut costs, because Microsoft, in order to add that to Windows, would have to pay 
a licensing fee to those conglomerates to use the codex that allow decoding of DVD and Blu-ray, they just sort of dropped the support for those formats. Now, there are a couple options. There is a way to get it to work with probably one of the most popular media players on the planet, VLC. VLC has native support for Blu-ray and DVD, but... It takes some working. Exactly. Because while they have native support, they don't have natively the keys to unlock the Blu-ray and DVD when you buy it. Now, I'm th there's a website called Techie Sky that I found a good explanation of how to do this. And I'm going to put this over here on the screen so you can see it. And when this goes up on YouTube, there will be a link to it. Let's put this over here. Um, you can go to this site and search for Blu-ray VLC Windows 10, and this article will come up. It is not... It, you actually have to go in and download uh, extra stuff for VLC and put them in the correct places to make them work. That's your free option. The pay option is something like Power... Like Mike said, Power DVD or Cyber DVD. Now, there's something else you need to be aware of. Even when you have Windows 10 in a Blu-ray player, Windows 10 may not recognize that Blu-ray player is there. Uh, especially if you do a Windows 10 update, you know, an update to Windows 10 rather than a flat, fresh install. Uh, now, there's uh, help online about how to fix this, and it is a very simple registry edit. Yeah. I just don't remember the path off the top of my head. I had to do it on my PC. Yeah. So but it's, it's out there. Um, Again, very simple, straightforward. But yeah, it's just the 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 downside is you're gonna have you're either going to have to deal with a whole bunch of technical bullshit to make it work, or you're gonna have to pay pay for it. Thanks, Microsoft. Well, actually, and Apple, Apple doesn't have it either, and Linux yeah. they can't because it's open source. No one owns it, so. <sighs> I guess I this is thanks LG, Sony, Philips, all of those wonderful, wonderful companies. Yeah, Will Jr., do I even put out the bullshit as we have to go through all this just to use something you paid for? Yeah, you have a Blu-ray drive. Even if you have a Blu-ray drive in your computer, you have to pay them again to watch the discs that you purchased because fuck you. And they wonder why people pirate shit. Seriously, you look at all this and you go, well, fuck it. I own the Blu-ray. I don't want to go through all this bullshit. I'll just torrent a fucking copy of the movie. I have the Blu-ray. I have the right to it. And there you go. This this is backwards fucking thinking. I hate that. Uh, let's move on. I think I want to go the, to... Uh, well, all right. This is a, a bit of a convoluted one from Sydney here. Uh, well, Zap. My name is Zap. Big fan of your show. It's from to Hi Nash and Creepy Mike. Why am I creepy? Okay. So, so let's start off with fuck you, Sid. Fuck you, Sid. There we go. Fuck, yeah. My name is Zap. Big fan of your show. I've come up with a tech question, which I thought maybe you can help with. I have an MSI GP70 Leopard, which I use for gaming, video making. Works great, but I've run into some issues. Firstly, the mouse pad. No using a real mouse is better, for, but for mobile use, this textured pad is murder on my fingertips. Can you replace this? How? No. This is one of the nasty parts about... Look, switch us back to the two-shot. This is one of the nasty parts about laptops. With desktop computers, just about everything has an industry standard footprint and can be swapped out and replaced. Just about anything. Yeah. Some have proprietary ones, especially if you buy an off-the-rack computer, but most stuff in the tech industry... You can just buy and swap, and, and they're made yeah. to fit into anything. But for laptops, you really can't do that. The most you can normally replace on a laptop is memory. Memory, or if sometimes if a hard, well, a hard drive. Hard drive, yeah, hard drive. But yeah. If you're lucky, and some older ones, you, can re you used to be able to replace the processor, but then they did the ball and socket 
uh, solder for for processors. So now, if you want to play, upgrade your your processor, you have to gank out the entire motherboard. So the they there's no other company that offers a competing trackpad for that MSI model because MSI is the only ones who make the trackpad for that laptop. There are no replacements. You are kind of stuck with what you get when you get a specific laptop. It's just how it is. So sadly, no, there is no solution for that. I, I guess... To get to disable it and use a mouse. Yeah, kind of a little workaround would be Remote Mouse, which is a nice little program on Android, which lets you, or I think there's one for oh, iOS too, it lets you use your cell phone as a trackpad. But that's just a little bit kind of silly at this point, especially if you have the laptop sitting right on your lap. Otherwise, there really isn't much you can do. I'm very sorry. That's just the nature of laptops. They there there is no up universal upgrading. They're just kind of you get a laptop, you've got what you've got. Now the next question is: I've had an issue with previous laptop as well. I use Sony Vegas to edit AMV's similar videos. However, I have a few uh, .veg files. That's the Vegas project files. We'll get halfway through opening before they completely crash. Found that occasionally, if we're having a good day, and keep the file open long enough to copy and paste a few files. To a new project file and then from there everything was just fine as long as i keep the rundown down uh about 20 seconds worth of video okay i've seen this issue before you need a new version of vegas yeah it sounds like it's a memory issue well it is and it's an issue that older versions of vegas have you need to update when uh, sony vegas you're not using the most current version. I know this is not a cheap thing to do. I know Vegas costs, what, $100, $200, something like that, depending on what version you get. You're you're going to need a newer version of Vegas. I've seen people use Vegas before who had this exact same problem, and they updated to a new version of Vegas. Problem went away. Vegas, Sony Vegas is a reliable video editor. I've known people who use it. But it is, of course, the cheapest option. It's, it's well, no, no. The cheapest option would be Microsoft Video Editor. That's not a video editor. That's a nightmare. That's that's a fucking nightmare. Yes, but it says video editor on the box. It's a nightmare, though. It's 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 you will you will literally bash your head into something trying to work that out so yeah my, hey, i made a video with it it's only about 10 seconds long well, yeah. um so yeah i'm sorry to say this you you need to get uh the newest version of vegas because i actually i have seen this exact problem in action before i've seen other people editing with vegas and then it would just suddenly stop working and they'd have to copy and paste into a whole new file it's some. It's not just a memory issue. It's something to do with the project files getting corrupt for some reason or another. Sony Vegas. So you'll need to get the newest version. I'm sorry. His last question of this is: uh, Could you recommend a good mod modem and/or router combo? Okay, combo out. No, completely. Don't do combo. No. M uh, modem surfboard. Yeah, Motorola surfboard. And router Asus uh, RT. Yeah, Asus RT, the, whichever the newest one is. There you go. We, we've got that one stopped yeah, right now. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's like you know going through the the cards in Doctor Who, going no, no, no. Yeah, yes. Here's how I respond. Yeah, it's, yeah, we've got that one. Pretty much got that one down at this point. Um, let's see. Our next one is from Stephanie. She says. Going to preface this by saying, feel free to call me an idiot on air if my problem is something very simple and I'm doing very wrong. I wouldn't call you an idiot on the air. I don't do that. Sorry. No. But uh, I have a basic Windows 8 computer. It worked fine since the day I set it up for school. About a year ago, I got a Trojan horse virus on my computer system. Next day, I took it to Geek Squad. Oh, no. Well, oh, why? If, if she doesn't know computers, you know, and doesn't have anyone immediately handy who knows computers, it's not the worst option in the world. It is the worst option in the world. No, no, no. You could hit it with a hammer. <laughs> 
you have could I have, you as one of my coworkers did this week, asked for an external drive so they could uh, back up their data because they needed to have a uh, their system reimaged because their mouse stopped working. Um, no, what? Their mouse stopped working, so they needed to have their system reimaged. <sighs> All right. Ask me how long it took me to it took to get the mouse fixed. Two seconds. That's about how long it took to unplug it from the USB port and plug it back in. Yeah. Oh, now I recognize it. Anyway, I don't know if I've ever told you this. I used to work at Best Buy a long time ago. Yeah, I think you mentioned it. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it on the show or not. This is okay, guys. Don't take shit to Best Buy. I worked in tech repair at Best Buy. And they had, here's how, how tech works at a company like that. Um, if you have a software problem, we're going to reimage your computer. That's how they do it. For, if you have any software problem, we're going to reimage your computer. We're going to tell you to back it up. We're going we're gonna to reimage it. We're going to do Windows from the start. That's how we do it. If you have a hardware problem, we're going to send it to someone else. And you have to wait three to six weeks for them to fix it and send it back. They don't do shit in-house at the Geek Squad. They just don't. That that's it. So at my store, which was in Savannah, Georgia, it was on Abercorn, just so you know, I'm probably going to get sued for this, but I fucking worked there, so shut up. Um, they kept a little, little device under the counter for particularly stubborn problems, especially when we were backed up and we didn't... It, well, I, I say we. I didn't work there that long. I worked there about five months, and then I quit. Um, I didn't get fired. I fucking quit. I was like, goodbye, you're crazy. Sometimes they get backed up. Sometimes they get lots and lots of computers in there, need to get them fixed and get them out the door. So to keep the line short, they had a device under the desk. I looked under them and I said, what is that? And they said, that's the Depomatic. That's a stun gun. No, no, that's the Depomatic. When we get backed up and we have something we just don't want to work on, they took the stun gun out. They would find some piece of, of they would go in the motherboard. They would find something they could, they would hit it with the stun gun to damage the electronics so they could send it to the depot and have them fix the shit for them. Yeah. See, I just have a four pound sledgehammer on my desk. I quit that job. I quit, I was like, bye bye. I'm going somewhere, fuck you. The deep, I shit you, I shit you not. Okay, so back to this though. Took it to Best Buy's Geek Squad. Yeah. A uh, few days, they handed it back to me with their own virus protection on it. Oh, no. Oh. I don't even know what they load as virus protection. It's yeah. probably like ABG. Well, now everything is slow. My school website, email, YouTube, etc. I've checked Adobe and Chrome for any updates I missed and found nothing. I've uninstalled the virus protector and nothing has improved. Everything else works fine on the computer, though. Okay, so... Even though you uninstalled the virus protector, there's probably still a separate firewall component that's on yeah. there. Yeah. And that is what's making you slow. Uh, I had the same problem with, uh, I forget what firewall I downloaded. Norton? No, I, I've was never, I, I'm one of the few people who have never had a problem with Norton. Um, You're like the unicorn. Yeah, I know. Uh, it was, um, I want to say it was actually ABG's firewall slowed down my internet dramatically. Uh, I just found it to be a piece of junk. They, there may be plenty of people who swear by ABG. I found it difficult to work I with. I used annoyance. to, and then ABG started trying to monetize their shit. I ain't used ABG since. Yeah. Um, the most annoying thing about ABG was that unless you paid them for a copy, it didn't do automatic updates. But, so, what you probably have is a firewall. So, yeah. check there for firewall issues. If uh, if you have a, a running firewall, you want a running firewall in many circumstances. But you want a properly configured one, and you also want one that's a dec that's decent software. Because yeah. it all depends on the software. 
Yeah, I, the, the firewall I missed the most, that was the most user-friendly and most powerful one ever I ever encountered was Black Ices. But they got bought out by someone and the product was discontinued. As for people are asking, what firewall do I use? I use, I put one on my router. Yeah. That, that, that is the thing about the firewall. If you put it on your router, you're offloading the work off your computer, for one thing. It doesn't have to fucking bother with it. It's a lot more configurable on your router, and it's designed that for it. it. It's happening at the source. You don't have to worry about your computer running into something that might be, you know, no, no. No, it's happening right where the internet comes into your house. It's like, you know, at the intake. Yeah. But, you know. Now, what, just off the top of my head, what I would look for in a firewall setting that is possibly causing the slowdown is many firewalls have a packet logging function. Yeah. Which you don't necessarily need as a home user. Mm. And that can slow things down. Packet now, logging means they're keeping track of all the requests that are made to your computer from from the internet. Like if a website asks you, "Oh hi, how you doing? What do you want to hear?" Okay, well, okay. Uh, what what site do you want to go to now? Okay, and your computer's making a list of every single response. Yeah, and it's get. tracking whether or not it it's, it it received a packet, dropped a packet, uh, both. And this can fill up a lot of space. It can take up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that comes to mind is uh, denial of service protection. Some firewalls come with that. If, to be honest, if you're a home user and you're not someone who is going to regularly attract the attention of Gamergate, you're probably not being DOS on a regular not basis. Being DDoS, no. So yeah, I would look. I would look to see if you have a firewall installed. If that doesn't work. You may sadly be back to the nasty old option of Mr. Factory Reset. Yeah. But that's the, that's the worst case scenario. And and back to, by the way, router-based firewalls. To put in another plug for Asus RT systems, they come with a fact, they come with a router-based firewall that is pretty robust. Yeah. And it, it can do the packet logging for you. And your computer don't have to fucking worry about it because it is a com it's another computer. It's nice. Yeah. It's good. Uh, uh, now, if you have to do a a uh, wipe and reload uh, factory reset of your computer, of course, back up your data first. External hard drives great for this. DVDs otherwise. Um, and take the weekend and start over from scratch. Yeah. And yeah. If there is yeah, so it's yeah. I'm sorry. It's annoying. Well, Windows 8, you don't even need a DVD for that. Well, it depends on how much data you have to back up. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. The, uh, the, the, and going back to the question, it says, uh, uh, one of the reasons your computer may be slow, it depends on the antivirus, excuse me, yeah, the antivirus and firewall they put on there. If they put it on there and they go, oh, we need to spend the money, and the, which of course they charge you for, to reactivate the, the firewall. Or, or an antivirus. A lot of AV products, and Norton does this too, don't get me wrong. Uh, um, a lot of them do, where they will have a thing where, oh, you're getting close to your reactivation time. We're going to slow things down to remind you to reactivate. Fucking monetization bullshit. Yep. So, sorry, Stephanie, I wish we had better news. We say that a lot, but that, that is, that's one of the nasty realities of these. Sometimes the, the, it's just how shit is. It sucks. Yeah. Sorry. Last one comes to us from Lee. He says, uh, hi, guys. Love the show. Uh, my question is, I have an AMD 260X OC graphics card. And every so often, it gives me artifact. It looks like checkerboard squares. It, does take, it take, doesn't take up the whole screen, just small rectangles. Can it be fixed? His case is clean. The card is seated correctly. And the drivers are up to date. If not, what replacement AMD card would you recommend for under 300 Australian? Okay, uh, first thing I would note is I've had similar problems before and they were caused by the card overheating. So the first thing I would do is download a program like SpeedFan, uh, which will, among other things, tell you how hot various components right. on your computer are. Actually, Assuming I think that the Catalyst, the built-in, well, the Crimson now, I think Crimson drivers from AMD built in 
it has a temperature sensor on it. So you can just go to the Crimson Control Panel that came with your AMD drivers, and it'll tell you how hot your card's getting. Ah, but see, the advantage of speed fan is not only to tell you how hard your card, how, how hot your card is getting, how hot other components are getting as well. True, so you got one true. stop yes, shop yes, yes, for true. how hot everything is. Um, and so check that first to see when you're running that. You know, are you spiking in heat? And if so, that's the pr that's pr likely the problem. And I would see about increasing cooling in the fan. Yeah, just well, in the case. Well, we're talking about artifacting. This happens with video cards, especially if you're playing a lot of really high-end games with 3D graphics and such. Artifacting is when the card isn't quite loading things properly. You either get weird things popping up on the screen. You get like weird squiggly lines. You think textures don't appear. Things look wrong. What's happening is the card is malfunctioning for a number of reasons. Either there's a driver issue, which means you just update the software, you're fine. Or there's actually hard, there's physical issues going on. With overheating, the card is getting too hot and it starts malfunctioning. Now, this can be a temporary issue with overheating. Sometimes cards can survive overheating a few times and it won't cause any damage. But if this happens repeatedly, the card can be permanently foobarred. Now, there is one other thing to take a look at. Uh, uh, the other times I've had that problem is when I've set the, because my, my video card is adjustable in its speeds. I can you know crank it up, lower it down if I wanted to you know, adjust the speed manually. And it's through an interface you know, I have. Uh, if I set it too high, I start getting a lot of artifacts because the card, the, the drivers and the software go, you can set your video card this high. And the card is going, I really only like it here. So that may be something to check as right. well. If, if you can check and see, it might not even be a problem with the fan of the card, although some of them are built better than others. I looked up this one. If you got the one straight from AMD, it just has the one that will do the job. If you got one that's overclocked, I'm assuming you got it from someone like MSI or uh, G or Gigabyte or one of the one of the other aftermarket creators. They have their own customized. Those tend to be better. Um, another thing you can do is improve the fans on your case. You can get better fans, more powerful fans, quieter fans, more to allow more airflow. If you have space in your case that for fans and you haven't put some in yet, you may want to add a few. For just make sure you keep an idea of fans normally hear how how's the configuration on a case should work. On the front and on the side should be intake fans. They should be pointed the, the way the air flows should be pointed inward toward the case. Fans on the top and on the back should be exhaust fans because you know that's how it goes. Cool air goes in, hot air rises. So the fans on the if you have fan mounts on the top of your case and the back of your case. Those should be pointed to exhaust. Those should. What should happen is the air should flow in from the bottom and the side, heat up, and then get expelled through the top. That's you know, it's the proper case airflow. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be much more effective that way. Right. You you could do it some other way, but you're you're gonna lose a lot of efficiencies. Right. Um. Now, if you check your airflow, if you check your temperatures and everything still seems fine, either one of two things have happened. You got a bum card from the, the store, it happens. Or it's overheated a couple times, or it had some other damage, and it's goofed. You will need a replacement at that point. There really is no fixing it. This is one of those ones where even if you have a warranty, if you're still within your warranty period, like if you have your receipts, if you have all, all the, the information you need for it, you might just be able to get a replacement card. I think most of these, most cards have about a year warranty on them, automatically, just off the bat. And they'll send you a replacement for it. Um, now, as far as replacement cards go, if you, if you know, that's not an option in the car, because two sixty, I'm not as conversant with the AMD numbering system as I am with, say, GeForces. But given that what I'm seeing out here, the current numbers for Radeon seem to be 390 
or a 960? A 360 would, a, th a 360 would be uh, comparable. Okay. Well, I'm seeing 960 as well, which confuses me because I'm seeing you know, similar price points, 390. So my guess is their numbers are all over the place. Yeah, kind of. Um, I would actually go with an R R7 uh, 370. Would be would be a decent a little bit of a bump because they are they are on their new uh they they're still using the two let's let me have a look real fast oh I'm, okay my mistake I was looking at I have a GeForce on one thing I said get show me well three seventy would be a little expensive I, I told it to show me Radeons and it showed me GeForces as well going like why do you want to show it see a Radeon you might just be stuck with getting another two sixty X or maybe a two sixty five God their their numbering system is driving me crazy um. Yeah, you might you might have just to, to to get another 260x if you really want to stick with a, an AMD. I'm not I'm not gonna give people shit. Some people have like you know ethical reasons, or they're just a fan preference, or just whatever it is. If you're an AMD fan and you want to stick with AMD, I just they haven't really added a whole lot of new stuff. So a 260 OC to... Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it an R, R9 380 from Power Cooler uh, for $209. Well, that's, that's American. American. Australian... I, I, I brought up another window to see uh, what the conversion rate was, and that's under the $300 oh, Australian. okay. All right. Well, yeah, then sure. Get yourself a little bit of an upgrade. But in the meanwhile, the first step you should be is checking the temperatures on it and... You may just be able to correct it with something as simple as um, adjusting some settings. Yeah, maybe throttle. It is an overclock card. When some some manufacturers make what are called overclocked graphics cards, and that is they turn the settings higher than the cards rated for, but they test them in house, and they're supposed to work at those settings because they tested them. They said it can handle it. Sometimes it can't handle it. Yeah. And when you get an overclocked card, it might not have been one of those ones that was made to work. I also see, just as for cards, I see an uh, MSI Radeon R9 380 for like $5 over your limit. Uh, so that seems like it's pretty good. And it's MSI, which is pretty good name in, in video cards. Yeah. So uh, Unlike Power Cooler, who I had not heard of before. Yeah, power cool, power color. Actually, power, power color. color sir. Yeah, power color. They're one of the low. They're they're one of the low men on the totem pole. I, I would. Um, I couldn't even get their name right. Obviously, I'd never heard of them before. Yeah. So yeah, I, but first, try to check your temperature. Try turning down some of the uh, the the speed, the the gigahertz speed on the the card itself. And see if that corrects your problem. Yeah, the, the big one I would check is memory clock and core clock. Yeah, the core. And turn those down a little bit and see what happens. Uh, if your uh, card has it, you might see if you want can set an upper limit on how much power it will draw, which might also help with the heating issue. Well, of course, AMD cards, they do tend to run a little bit hotter than, uh, than the NVIDIA ones. It's just... One of the ways they resign, but well, that's going to wrap it up for us for this week. Thank you, Mike. Oh, sure. And thank you all again. Send your questions to requests at radio.air.com. We'll attempt to take care of them. In the meanwhile, good night, everybody. <laughs>